Welcome to Maths Financial, a geopolitical from a frontier. Thank you for stopping by. Plenty going on everywhere. Let me start with the market trades large in waves and sequences, and within them are smaller waves and sequences. Know the time frame you're trading Nassar investing. Growth forecasts have been upgraded for the Euro area, Japan, emerging Asia and emerging Europe, down for the UK and for India. That's the World Economic Update from the IMF. Uh, here's a pictorial, which economies are up, which are down. Let's look at the WEO, World Economic Outlook numbers again, IMF. Alibaba tops Amazon to become the biggest e-commerce company. After 831 days, Alibaba Group regained the title of the world's biggest e-commerce company, albeit briefly. The Chinese retailer surpassed Amazon Tuesday on an intraday basis as the U.S.'s retail giant stock continued to stall after second quarter earnings missed estimates and the merchant forecast a possible operating loss for the third quarter. Alibaba, whose stock is up over 109% this year, held the top spot for the first nine and a half months after its initial public offering in 2014. If you have a moment, do listen to Jack Ma when he was here in Nairobi and took part in a round table at the Kapinski, which I moderated. Home thoughts, five years ago, I was shot in an attempt to stop me from speaking out for girls' education. Today, I attend my first lectures at Oxford, so tweeted Malala. And uh, I tweeted back saying, so proud of you, Malala, which indeed I am. Uh, for lovers, touch is metamorphosis. All the parts of their bodies seem to change and they seem to become something different, better, John Cheever. Charging into the Tuesday like this elephant in the Amboseli, this photograph is by Mark Drury, isn't it dramatic? John Cheever again, I was here on earth because I chose to be. Sachin Rai also visited the Amboseli, I liked his photograph as well. And then I came across this from Kenya researcher Juha Cancunin in 1993, the memories of the safari rally. And I remember dad used to put us all in the car and we'd go to these vantage points and watch it. It was great fun. Then it is dark. It is a night where kings in golden suits ride elephants over the mountains. John Cheever again. This photo is taken with a drone shows Belarusians harvesting cranberries at a farm in Silice. And my final John Cheever quote for the day, the world that was not mine yesterday now lies spread at my feet, a splendor. I seem in the middle of the night to have returned to the world of apples, the orchards of heaven. Perhaps I should take my problems to a shrink or perhaps I should enjoy the apples that I have streaked with colour like the evening sky. Political reflections, Puigdemont says the region has won the right to become a republic that calls for dialogue. This, uh, these comments helped the Spain's ETF to soar uh, as the market perceived Catalans have called a timeout on the, their independence bid and are seeking Spanish talks. Raw Story is reporting Kelly and Mattis discussed literally tackling Trump in the event he lunges for the nuclear football. New York Magazine contributing editor Gabriel Sherman on Tuesday reported on a remarkable conversation he had with a senior Republican official who described conversations Donald Trump's Chief of Staff, General John Kelly, and Defense Secretary James Mattis have had about physically restraining the President in the event he lunges for the nuclear football. Sherman was discussing the growing concern in the West Wing over Trump's temperament, particularly as the President continues to escalate feuds with 
prominent Republicans like Secretary of State Rex, Rex Tillerson and Senator Bob Corker, while simultaneously setting the United States on the path to World War III. Is Facebook spinning out of control over Russian revelations, asked the Financial Times. Russia's weaponization of Facebook to influence last year's US election has raised grave questions about whether Mark Zuckerberg's product is spinning out of control. Facebook's newspaper ads listed nine immediate actions it is taking to fight any attempt to interfere with elections by using its site. It also vowed to protect its community. Members of Congress who used to fawn over Facebook are realizing the limitations of existing regulation and self-service platform lets anyone with a credit card buy ads without the need for direct contact with a Facebook employee. A complex algorithm creates filter bubbles that mean no single user has a, few, has a full view of all the campaigns. Only in the past few weeks have lawmakers realized the potential for misuse. The Russian bought Facebook ads cost $100,000 and reached 10 million Americans. Simply outstanding return on their investment. Targeting swing states, the propaganda on everything from race to guns to gay rights, and the threat has not gone away. Last month, Russian internet trolls sought to stir up passions in a debate over American football players kneeling in protest during the national anthem, according to James Lankford, a senator from Oklahoma. And this goes back to my piece in December. We have a DV-8 Tomahawk. The U.S. military has deployed two B-1B bombers over the north over Korean Peninsula late on Tuesday and I go back to September 2017 when I spoke of a screaming coming across the sky. Gravity's Rainbow is a 1973 novel by Thomas Pynchon which is about the design, production and dispatch of V2 rockets by the German military. In particular it features the quest undertaken by several characters to un cover the secret of a mysterious device called the Schwarz Gerät, slated to be installed in a rocket with the serial number 0000. As the world watches Pyongyang, I cannot help wondering if Kim Jong-un has read Pinchon, which speaks of a screaming coming across the sky. It is a curve each of them feels unmistakably, it is the parabola that must have guessed once or twice, guessed and refused to believe that everything always collectively had been moving toward that purified shape in the sky, that shape of no surprise, no second chance, no return. The U.S.'s uh, guided missile destroyer, the Shafi, carried out normal maneuvering operations that challenged excessive maritime claims near the Paracel Islands. Unlike in August, when a U.S. Navy destroyer came within 12 nautical miles of an artificial island built up by China in the South China Sea, officials said the destroyer on Tuesday sailed close, but not within that range of the island. 12 nautical miles mark internationally recognized territorial limits. Sailing within that range is meant to show the United States does not recognize territorial claims. And I wrote about this at the end of August when I said, apart from a few half-hearted and timid phonops, I called it, and this is another example of the Shafi that have gone within that 12 kilometer uh, limit. I said, China has established control over the South China Sea. It has created artificial islands and then militarized those artificial islands. It's a mind-boggling geopolitical advance any which way you care to cut it. Angelina Jolie volunteered to snare warlord Joseph Coney in a dinner honey trap. This has been reported by the Sunday Times. Prince Johnson, who was a warlord who had Liberia's President Doe murdered in one of 20, it's one of 20 people running for president today. International markets, the IMF up, ups its global growth forecast by 0.1%. 3.6% cuts projections for US, UK and India, increases forecasts for Italy, Spain and Germany. 
Um, but uh, Jamie at Reuters, Fed's raising rates about to wind the balance sheet, yes, yet U.S. financial conditions are the lowest in almost three years. Fair point. J.S. Blockland, bull market, Nikkei 225 at a multi-year high. Currency markets, the euros traded higher, last trading at 118.37 on the Catalonian news dollar index, 93.21 Japanese yen, 112.27, Swiss franc 0.9748, the pound 132.03, the Australian dollar 0.7793, India rupee 65.285. South Korean one eleven thirty five point six three, Brazilian real three point one seven nine four, Egyptian pound seventeen point five nine five five, South African rand at a six month low thirteen point six seven two zero. Um, one year U.S. Treasury yield has jumped seven basis points, closing at its highest level in almost nine years, one point four two percent. December's rate hike is now a shoe in dollar index. Take a look at the three month chart, still working around that 93.50 level, which I think is so key. Euro dollar got a little bit of a pop here. 118.37, that's all on the basis um, of the Catalonian uh, position. Um, and uh, let's see how we proceed from here. Has 10 to 15% fallen sterling since Brexit? boosted uh, UK trade, not a bit, excuse me, trade deficit is a record 14.25 billion pounds in August. Meanwhile, Bitcoin hit 4,900, thank you JS Blockland, but we're slightly, where are we now, 4,800. Um, commodity markets, gold, this is a chart from NASA investing, last trading just 12.89 crude oil, which has been all over the place of late. U.S. crude oil is at $51.20. and um, I think it's probably a sell again. Irma sends Florida's orange crop to a 76-year low, the lowest since 1942. Orange use for November delivery rose 1.6 percent. The prices climbed 20 percent since the end of August. Emerging markets, it needs one big negative thing for all of it to fall like a house of cards, said Guillaume Tresca, senior strategist of Credit Agricole. And that's an aggressive Fed or macro data from China, but so far we don't see any such risk. Investors continue to play the game. And why not? A gauge of emerging market currencies has jumped 15% and stocks have gained in 15 of the past 20 months while bond spreads relative to U.S. Treasuries sit at the lowest level in a decade. The bullishness persisted in the face of an attempted coup in Turkey, an impeachment in South Korea, and a power struggle in South Africa. The U.K.'s vote to leave the European Union in the election of U.S. President Donald Trump caused short-lived ripples. Liberia begins counting ballots after a peaceful end to voting. The economy expanded an average 7.5% between 2006 and 2013 until the nation was hit by the worst ever Ebola epidemic that killed thousands of people. That combined with a sharp drop in output of iron ore, Liberia's main source of foreign currency, meant there was zero growth between 2014 and 2016. The IMF, in the paragraph regarding Sub-Saharan Africa, said this, in Sub-Saharan Africa, the outlook remains challenging. Growth is projected to rise in 2017 and 2018, but will barely return to positive territory in per capita terms this year for the region as a whole, and would remain negative for about a third of the countries of the region. The slight upward revision to 2017 growth relative to the April 2017 WEO forecast reflects a modest upgrading of growth prospects for South Africa, which is experiencing a bumper crop due to better rainfall, and an increase in mining output prompted by a moderate rebound in commodity prices. However, the outlook for South Africa remains difficult, with elevated political uncertainty and weak consumer and business confidence, and the country's growth forecast was consequently marked down for 2018. For Sub-Saharan Africa in 2015, we grew 3.4%. 2016, 
2016, 1.3%, which was a 20 year low. 2017, they're projecting 2.7% and 3.5% projection for 2018. Brookings asks, is Africa still rising? Uh, Africa's skeptics have overlooked a number of important factors. For starters, when one sets the three largest economies aside, Sub-Saharan Africa's aggregate growth rate for this year rises from 25 to almost 4%. That is faster than the 3.5% rate which the global economy is currently growing. In fact, five of the ten fastest growing economies in the world are in Africa. And over the next five years, around half of all sub-Saharan African economies will expand at an average rate similar to or higher than that which prevailed during the Africa rising heyday. The only man Kabila is scared about in the country is me, said Moishi Katumbi. Congo is losing every day, every minute, every second. Mr. Kabila is in office. His mandate is finished. He said he's going back in December. And of course, he was removed from the scene in June. Kabila, I said, I flicked the channels, came across a report from the Congo. This is June 2016, where opposition presidential hopeful Moishi Katumbi had been leading the street against a third term for Kabila. Birthday boy, President Joseph Kabila is constitutionally barred from running for a third term. And Katumbi has set out his stall now as a formidable adversary. In fact, the numbers were building, and Katumbi must have been thinking that this might just turn into a tsunami. President Kabila, however, outwitted Katumbi by removing him from the street in the Congo entirely, and I said that one might well prove a tech cleverly administered technical knockout. Ethiopia's National Bank announced it will devalue the beer by 15% and also raised interest rates by two percentage points uh, for deposits to 7%. Abraham G tweeted this, Durban floods, my goodness, that was pretty serious stuff. Um, as we said, IMF says it expects South Africa's economy to grow by 0.7% this year, down from an earlier projection of 1% in July. Growth is projected to remain subdued despite more favorable commodity export prices and strong agricultural production has heightened political uncertainty, saps consumer and business confidence, they said. South African all shares at a record high, it's up 13.77% so far this year. Mark Mobius said we can buy NASPAs cheaper than we can buy Tencent. NASPAs has piggybacked on Tencent to become Africa's biggest company by market value and one of the world's largest investors in e-commerce ventures from Mail.ru Group in Russia to iFood in Brazil. Its 33% stake in WeChat created Tencent, bought for $32 million in 2001, is now worth $142 billion. While NASPAs itself is valued at about $102 billion. Astros is also Africa's largest pay TV provider. We can buy NASPAS cheaper than we can buy Tencent, Mobius said. If you buy NASPAS, you get an African satellite TV business for free, and you're buying this big internet company, Tencent, at a discount. If you have a choice to buy Tencent or NASPAS, you better buy NASPAS. Dollar versus Rand, last time I had a look, we were at 13.674, six month lows for the Rand Egyptian pound, 17.5955. Nigerian all share up 36.85% so far this year. Ghana Stock Exchange up 35.37% so far this year. President Theo, Theodora Obiang once closed the US Embassy in Equatorial Guinea in 1993 after accusing the US ambassador of being a wizard. I don't think the Turks have tried that yet. My piece over the weekend was obviously about how politics was landing blows on the economy and I said what is clear is that the advantage of incumbency in fact accelerates in this round two of the election. Therefore I said I expect the opposition to boycott the election entirely and that the strategy of tension will be maintained by degrading and denigrating the entire process. Market participants need to model this scenario because this is the direction of travel, I said. And we learned yesterday that the Kenyan opposition leader has withdrawn from the 
presidential election rerun in the interests of the people of Kenya, the region, and the world at large. We believe that all will be best served by NASA vacating the presidential candidature of elections slated for 26th of October 2017, Odinga said. So that certainly added a huge element of uncertainty. President Kenyatta told supporters he expected the vote would go ahead on October 26, and the people of Kenya will have the right to choose and determine who their leaders shall be. I, kind of tongue-in-cheek, started thinking of Baldrick's cunning plan. So the plan is so cunning, it's like putting it, I can't remember it, you'll have to go and watch it, but it's a very short clip, well worth listening to. Uh, President uh, Nelson Havy is uh, promoting the idea that there will be no election on the 26th of October. Um, and this is, various people are trying to interpret the law. I think essentially we're going to have the election on the 26th, and that will be that. It will be a guillotine effect. Nairobi all shares up 20.63% so far this year. NSC20 is up 16.02% so far this year. If you've got a moment, Watch this footage from Zinwa News aerial cameras capture stunning, really seen views of the flamingo paradise of Lake Bagoria, which I've never visited, but would like to. Thanks for stopping by.